You may have noticed in the last few days there was another earthquake prediction doing the rounds. An earthquake prediction that predicted that there would be a significant earthquake on the 22nd of March 2012. Now obviously that didn't happen, but the doomsday prophets aren't so easily deterred, and of course some of them said they were predicting an earthquake within a certain time frame, and naturally this time frame would then include the 20th of March on which there was a significant earthquake in Mexico. So if we're going to look at this, we are looking at earthquake predictions spanning time frames of three days, 20th, the 21st and the 22nd for example. Those kind of predictions. Now these seem to be fairly specific predictions and I can well imagine that if you are gullible enough to fall for the pseudo-scientific rambling that surrounds such pr predictions, then you might think that the people presenting them to you are onto something here, that there seems to be something real going on, and that the people who are presenting these predictions to you have some sort of deeper insight into the nature of the solar system or the universe that you might be lacking. And I think it's about time that we disabused people who are prone to being taken in by such arguments of the mistake that they're making. And it is a very simple mathematical mistake. So let's do a bit of earthquake maths. Now, before we start, let's first of all look at what people consider to be significant earthquakes. Now some people would include earthquakes of magnitude 5.5 in the list of significant earthquakes. But let's be generous and let's start the term significant earthquake at the level 6, which is a fairly sizable earthquake in anybody's book. So if we only look at earthquakes of magnitude 6 or higher, let's have a look at the frequency with which these things occur in any given year. And you'd be surprised if you didn't already know this, but earthquakes of magnitude 6 or higher actually take place amazingly often. In actual fact, in any given year, and these, this is based on statistics gathered over a hundred years, and I'll point you to links in the underbar, on any given year you could expect there to be roughly 130 earthquakes of a magnitude between 6 and 6.99. There would also be, in any given year, approximately 15 earthquakes of magnitude 7 to 7.99, even more significant. And in any given year, you could on average expect there to be one earthquake of magnitude 8 or higher a real wobber of an earthquake. So we're looking in any given year at approximately 146 significant earthquakes. So let's just do a little bit of probability on this, shall we? If there, if you can expect approximately 146 significant earthquakes in any given year, which is 365 days on average, then the chance on any given day, today, the chance that there will be a significant earthquake today is 0 0.4, 40 percent if you prefer that terminology. That's pretty high. So now let's look at somebody who wants to milk that, somebody who wants to profit from pretending to be a prophet and who wants to present an earthquake prediction and then afterwards claim, you see, I predicted this earthquake. Let's see. Let's take a prediction of an earthquake, a significant earthquake, in any given three-day period. Say, the 20th of March till the 22nd of March, which is the sort of prediction that some people have been putting forward, isn't it? So, now of course, these people, in order to make even more sure that they stand a good chance of getting it right, will play the time zones game. So if 
An earthquake takes place on the 19th of March in Mexico, for example, they will say, oh, but it was already the 20th of March in New Zealand. You know that sort of game playing? So let's be generous there and say that if you are giving us a prediction of three days, 20, 21, 23, 2nd of March, then we're really looking at a time span from 12 noon UTC on the 19th of March to 12 noon UTC on the 23rd of March. Because within that time frame, somewhere on this planet, it will still be the 20th or the 22nd of March. So, generous. That gives us a time span of an, act an actual fact, four full days. Four, four times 24 hours, four days. Now let's crunch the numbers. As I said already, there's a 0 0.4 chance, 40% chance, that there will be a significant earthquake on any given day. So let's see what the chances are of you, as a wannabe prophet, getting your timings wrong. So there would have to be no earthquake on the first of your four days. That is a 1 minus 0 0.4 is 0.6% chance. 0.6, i.e. 60% chance. So the chances of you getting your prediction wrong, wrong for the first day is 60%, pretty high. Same goes for the second day, the third day, and the fourth day. So four times you've got a 60% chance of getting your prediction wrong. But to get your prediction wrong in the complete four-day time frame, you're going to have to multiply those numbers together. And if you multiply 0 0.6 together four times, 0 0.6 to the power of 4, now you're looking at a pretty darn healthy chance of getting your prediction right. In actual fact, if you posted this for any four-day period, or any three-day period, with the time zone game in play, then you are actually standing, and work it out for yourself, a 0 0.88 chance, or an 88% chance, that you are going to get your prediction right. So if you are one of a profit, just post two of them a year and you stand a very good chance of getting it right once and then you can go strutting your stuff saying that you are a prophet. Let's say you want to play it even safer. You pick a two-week period in which there will be a significant earthquake. Now you're talking about a chance of 0.9993 of getting your prediction right. The chances that you, if you predict a significant earthquake within, say, say the first two weeks in June, the chances of you getting that wrong are less than one in a thousand. So these people aren't really displaying any deep insights into the working of the universe, are they? These people are just very shrewd gamblers. And that's all.